हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू ऑनलाइन लेक्चर सीरीज ऑर्गेनाइज बाय एस एन डी कॉलेज ऑफ इंजीनियरिंग एंड रिसर्च सेंटर एवला टूडेज टॉपिक इज मशीन टेक्निक्स इन कंप्यूटर एडेड इंजीनियरिंग आई एम डॉक्टर अर्षद राणी हियर आर दी टॉपिक्स दैट वी हैव टू कवर्ड इन दिस लेक्चर फर्स्ट इज द इंट्रोडक्शन टू मेशिंग देन टाइप्स ऑफ एलिमेंट टाइप्स ऑफ मेशिंग एंड क्राइटेरिया फॉर गुड मेशिंग and mesh generation a mesh is a representation of larger geometric domain by smaller discrete cells mesh is used to compute the solutions of a partial differential equation uh, to simulate some physical phenomenon using numerical technique a mesh is the representation of larger geometric domain by smaller discrete cells meshes are commonly used to compute solutions of partial differential equation and render computer graphics and to analyze the geographical and cartographic data a mesh par partition space into elements over which the equations can be solved which then approximates the solution over the larger domain element boundaries may be constrained to lie on the internal or external boundaries within a model higher quality elements have better numerical properties where want constitutes a better element depends on the general governing equations and the particular solution to the model instance in finite element analysis the goal is to simulate some physical phenomenon using numerical technique called finite element method to quantify physical phenomenon such as wave propagation or fluid flow we must use mathematical equations most physical phenomenon can be solved using partial differential equations but this is very difficult for most real world problems any continuous object has an infinite degree of freedom which makes it impossible to solve using hand calculations so in finite element method we create a mesh which splits the domain into a discrete number of elements for which the solution can be calculated the data is then interpolated across the whole domain basic theme of a finite element analysis is to make calculations at only limited number of points and then interpolate the results for entire domain any continuous object has infinite degree of freedom and it's just not possible to solve the problem in this format finite element method reduces the degrees of freedom from infinite to finite with the help of discretization techniques that is known as meshing that converts the body into nodes and elements meshing is one of the key components to obtaining accurate results from an fea model the elements in the mesh must take many aspects into account to be able to discretize stress gradients accurately typically the smaller the mesh size the more accurate the solution as the design are better sampled as the design are better sampled across the physical domain the trade off is that the higher the accuracy the larger the simulations become and thus solve the times are extended there is no point in spending extra hours running a simulation with a dense mesh if a coarser mesh will be give you good result engineers often perform convergence studies to obtain the optimal balance between accuracy and solve time these are the types of elements which are available in one dimensional element it is very large in in comparison with the rest of two dimensions it is generally shown by line element and it remains in remaining in two dimensions for examples of this type of elements are rod bar beam pipe and axisymmetric shells the two dimensional element in case of two of the dimensions are very large in comparison to third one element shapes are quadrilateral triangular 
the remaining dimensions like its thickness element types or examples of such elements are thin shells plates membranes plane plane stresses etc the three dimensional element include all the dimensions are comparable they includes the tetrahedral pentagonal hexahedral geometries this type of elements are used or examples of such type of elements are solid elements they are used in transmission casing engine block crankshafts etc along with these all elements there are certain elements like mass point element which are shows the concentrated mass then spring element which shows is translational and rotational stiffness the damping element having certain damping coefficient and well as gap elements which has gap distance stiffness friction or rigid and weld elements then types of meshing the whole meshing is covered and classified into two main types structured mesh and unstructured mesh the structured meshes are the meshes which implicit connectivity whose structure allows for easy identification of elements and nodes open structured meshes have a orthogonal quadrilateral or hexahedral elements structured meshes allow programmers to enumerate the nodes in such a way that any adjacent elements or nodes can be called upon without knowing any connectivity information it is also possible to access coordinates easily because the size of each element does not vary element to element the major advantage of this structured mesh is it has efficient memory and it is faster to solve wherever there are certain disadvantages including angled and curved geometries are approximated by using stair step method now unstructured mesh unstructured meshes are the meshes with general connectivity whose structure is arbitrary and therefore the connectivity of element must be defined and stored such type of elements are non orthogonal such as triangle tetrahedra in un unstructured meshes required programmers to map more data to each node such as adjacency list and coordinate list the advantage of, of the unstructured mesh is the complex geometry are easier to mesh and arbitrary positions can be considered and the major disadvantage is it requires higher memory and it is very slow to solve these are the certain criteria for good meshing the shape of the element meshing should avoid both sharp and flat angles so that we can easily mesh the object number of elements should be moderate as compared to the efficiency of the finite element analysis program there should be a topological consistency between exact input domain and its mesh and mesh should be automatic and easily adaptable these are the certain good criteria and characteristics for the good meshing now mesh generation there are two type of mesh generation methods or two types of mesh meshing mesh meshing methods one of the type is known as free mesh while another is the map mesh a free mesh has no element shape restriction they are freely meshed by the plane which shown in the figure to the right top side corner the mesh does not follow any pattern a free mesh is suitable for complex shapes areas and volumes map then map maps it restricts the element shapes to quadrilaterals for area and hexahedra for volumes typically has a regular pattern with obvious rows of element and this type of the uh, map mesh is suitable only for regular areas and volumes such as rectangles and bricks in mesh generation here is the comparison of this free mesh and map mesh free mesh it is easy to create no need to divide complex shapes into regular shapes volume meshes can be contain only tetrahedra and resulting in a larger number of elements only higher order elements like tetrahedral elements are acceptable so the number of degrees of freedom are very high in case of map mesh they are generally contains a lower number of elements 
lower order elements may be acceptable so the degree of freedom is lower areas and volumes may must be regular in shape and mesh division must be meet certain criteria when it is map mesh is very difficult to achieve especially for complex problems and volumes okay friends this is about the meshing techniques used in finite element analysis and uh, we have seen the topic cover are the different types of meshes we have classified the mesh into structured mesh and unstructured mesh as well as we generated the mesh with the help of mesh generation criteria that is known as free meshing and map meshing almost as per the depth of problem is considered type of the meshing is required in order to obtain the accurate solution thank you